Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer. We're going to be looking at a PowerPoint here um, in order to determine the symmetricalness of a molecule. So, first of all, let's kind of just review a few things here so that we can all be on the same track as far as what things mean and uh, what I'm talking about. So what does it mean to be symmetrical? So I think most people understand the term symmetrical. But we're looking at essentially, okay, X bonded to X. That would be a symmetrical situation. We could have X bonded to Y. That, that would not be a symmetrical situation. Um, I could have X bonded to, um, to Y and then to, let's say, to Y. Now, is that symmetrical? Yes, it's the same on this side as that. So be a little aware that what symmetrical looks like you kind of got to be able to use your own judgment a little bit of x uh, bonded to x bonded to y that is not symmetrical in this situation um, so with that being said symmetrical has to do with the shape somewhat but also has to do with the atoms that are present in there so I could do for example x bonded to y bonded to y bonded to y okay now technically, it's, this is a symmetrical shape. It's symmetrical here, it's symmetrical, and this is symmetrical here. This is a symmetrical shape. But X bonded to Y, bonded to Y, bonded to Z, no longer symmetrical. Even though it's got a symmetrical shape, the individual pieces kind of need to be uh, there in order to be symmetrical. All right, so what are bonded and non-bonded pairs, electron pairs? Okay, so, so in an atom, in an atom a central atom is gonna determine if the molecule is symmetrical, okay? Now with that said, it has electron clouds around the outside. So let's say I might just say something like this, okay? So that would be representing something like this where I have an electron cloud that's just sort of hanging out here and it's got this guy. I could have something that looks something like, let's say this, okay? Now that's got two electron clouds, okay? We call these things right here electron domains. Okay, so with that being said, it may, it may sound strange, but uh, electrons um, domains, these guys are always symmetrical well you may say well how can that be well these guys are negative and they will always push away from another negative uh, therefore they always form a symmetrical shape no matter what so I could have uh, something like this where I have an electron cloud here and I have an electron cloud here and the B call that shape linear, and we'll get into that more in a moment, but that's linear, I, and that's symmetrical. I could have three electron domains. Right? Again, there's no, I haven't even, it doesn't matter how I draw this, because it's not, three-dimensional shapes aren't the best at showing on, on paper, but uh, we should note, regardless of how they draw it, that is a symmetrical shape. We call it trigonal planar. Okay, so with that being said, um, okay, so always symmetrical. Now we call these non-bonded pairs or non-bonded electron domains. But electron domain can be bonded or it can be non-bonded. So I could take this exact molecule here and throw an atom to overlap and bond with one of these, one or all of these little domains. So I could have X, let's say Y. So it might look like this, X, unbonded domain here, unbonded domain here, and this is a shared electron clouds, and here's Y. I still have three electron domains, and you'll notice that my electron shape here, or electron shape, is still symmetrical, but the molecules are not symmetrical. So this looks like this, okay? So, in this situation, I am no longer symmetrical because I need to have a Y here 
and a y here to be symmetrical. So why do I, again, let's backtrack for a second. Why do I care if a molecule is symmetrical? Well, in this case, we do know that if you have a di, if you have a, if you are symmetrical, okay, if symmetrical, Okay, then you have a, what's called a dipole moment. Okay, equaling zero. So there would be literally, at least in this means, um, no attraction of one atom to another atom. And we're kind of learning about that. We call these things here intermolecular forces. Now. This is just one type of intermolecular force. There's more types. Doesn't mean doesn't mean there can't be some other way to get something going on here. But I mean, at this point, the dipole moment is zero, which is controlling some of those intermolecular forces. Okay, so it tells a lot about the atom. All right. So that being said, is there a shortcut way for me to know if a molecule is symmetrical? And the answer is yes. Now it's not perfect. And we'll learn, do some more information here, but if you're struggling with some of this stuff, then this might be a good way to just get from point A to point B. You'll note that if X is has nothing attached to it, okay, then it's symmetrical. And then if we put something on it, okay, so let's say X, Y, it would look like this. Empty pair, empty pair. It doesn't even matter how I draw this. I could draw this like this. It doesn't matter. It's actually looking like this. It's pushing away to get as much room as possible. Let's put an atom in here. Let's put Y in here. Okay. Is it symmetrical? And the answer is yes. My sorry, it's its shape is symmetrical. It's still looking like this. It's got I could even put the Y up top. It doesn't matter. So it would be unbonded pair, unbonded pair, and bond to Y. This is not symmetrical. Okay. What if we do this? X, Y, 2. Draw your Lewis structure out. Looks like this. X, bonded to Y, bonded to Y, and unbonded pair. Is that symmetrical? No. No, it's not symmetrical. It was symmetrical when it was has all three domains balanced. So when we start putting something in here, we need to have something in all of them to get back to that balance point. I'm missing a spot here. So here's the key, okay? And it's a shortcut that doesn't work. It's, there's a couple examples where it doesn't work, but it, it, those examples are, aren't that common. So if a Lewis structure has a unbonded pair electrons then the atom likely is not symmetric because we know our electron bonding pairs are always symmetrical. So we need to have something in every one of them to maintain that symmetricalness. There are a couple of exceptions to this, okay? Just so you know. All right, so let's keep moving. That's our shortcut rule, and that's kind of, you know, that's something that can be a bit of a lifeline if, if some of this stuff isn't sticking in your brain, okay? There we go. All right, so next up here, this is our little sheet here. Okay, so we're gonna just review a whole bunch of shapes. And for some people, they can just see these things in their brains and they stick nicely. Some people, not so much. Okay, so let's just start walking through some. I'll be jumping back and forth to a PowerPoint. So electron domain. So I have a central atom and, um, well, it's got two electron domains. And they're both bonded, so there's something here, okay? Therefore, that is means nothing is left. There's no unbonded pairs here. If there's only two 
electron domains total and nothing's mi you know nothing's missing so there it's zero non-bonded I would need a pair right there to be non-bonded but then my number of electron domains would be three and that's not what I have okay so with being said angle this angle is 180 degrees okay hybridization now this is a unique kind of way in which they categorize the number of domains so this guy is S called SP and that's really all we're going to say about it there are two things listed here and these things is, is the number of electron domains there's one and there's two so it's SP one two is it symmetrical well, as long as, we're going to assume as long as the, the atoms are the same yes do I have any unbonded pairs there no name of shape linear Okay, now we can bounce back and forth to this PowerPoint and you'll see here are, are our five main shapes. I just did linear. So like I mentioned on this thing here uh, that electron domains are always symmetrical. So if I have, let's say for example, this is showing me the, all the different number of things. Two things off the center, three things off the center, four things off the center, five things off the center, six things off the center. As long as, as long as that's the total electron domains and they're all full, they'll always be symmetrical because every electron domain has an atom and every electron domain, that means it's symmetrical. Okay, Electron domains will always go symmetrical. Only time you're gonna be asymmetrical typically is when one of those electron domains is missing and just has empty pair electrons in there. Then we're lopsided. So we have five standard types of shapes. And that's important. I would say that you know things you want to kind of remember. That, you know, not everything's important, but we have two things off the center. We got three things off the center. We got four things off the center. We got five things off the center, and we have six things off the center. And those main shapes all have names, and those names are right there. So we'll see those in a moment. All right. Um, so and here's our linear okay so that being said the first one you know is it is it symmetrical well the answer is yes hydrogen hydrogen here we go uh, hydrogen cyanide however has a highly electric atom here nitrogen so it is it isn't it's not symmetrical okay and it is not polar either it's, this is a polar uh, molecule okay it, it it has a highly electronegative atom and it's not symmetrical. Here we have carbon dioxide, that one is um, symmetrical, so dipole moment of zero. All right, so now we go three things up to the center. Okay, um, three electron domains. So we have boron hydride. All right, so again, a couple things we wanna know here. Um, its name is trigonal planar. It's symmetrical. All, any unbonded pairs up here? No. Hybridization, sp3. Notice we have three electron domains, sp3, sp2. There's three things total. Are these polar? Symmetrical, dipole moment of zero, nonpolar. This guy, eh, it's trigonal planar, but it's not the same, right? So this guy is polar. Let's fill our sheet out a little bit here. All right, and here we go. And I want to do the different one here. This guy. Here we go. So this is some of the center. And we have bonded, bonded, bonded. I try to draw like a trigonal planar, but it doesn't always work the best on paper. So trigonal planar. Is it symmetrical? Yes. Hybridization sp2. Angle, that's 360 divided by 3 is 120. And bond, number, uh, on bond is 0. Now we're taking this guy and we're going to say, okay, two, three things to total, but one of them is missing, meaning that it just has empty pair electrons there. Okay, so there's one non-bonded pair there. It's located right here. And that is our indication this thing is now is symmetrical. No. Okay. Um, its name, okay, let's keep back with this PowerPoint here. 
can see it. Uh, next one here is, that's that guy. Okay, there we go. It's bent. Bent is the name of this thing. Okay, kind of not too technical. You see an example of it right there. Okay, and let's go ahead and put this in. Uh, it's angle still, we're still, it's all electron domains the same. Our angle is pretty much still 120. Okay, uh, sp2, because there's still three domains, one, two, three, and we call it bent. Okay, next one, four things off the center. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. All right, four things off the center. We call this thing tetrahedral, okay? Um, tetra meaning it's got four sides to it. All right, and you'll see it's, again, a symmetrical shape because there's no unbonded pairs, and that's each atom, each electron domain has an atom, 109 degrees. Are these polar? Well, this one's not because neither of them are because they're symmetrical and dipolum of zero. Angle is 109. Let's fill our let's fill out our sheet out. Okay, so first of all, the name is called um, tetrahedral. Tetrahedral is it symmetrical. Yes. Now there's three. There's four electrons. That means S P three. Angle 109. Um, unbonded pairs, none, because they're all bonded. So really, you subtract these two, you could say non-bonded pairs. This is the number of unbonded pairs. So here, um, we have, a, again, an up, down. That's hard to see three-dimensionally. Um, all right, so now one of them is missing. We got bonded, 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 missing. Okay, so there's one unbonded pair. Will it be symmetrical? Uh, no. Tetrahedral. Um, let's go see what we got for a shape here. Um, all right, so next guy here. All right, so now I'm missing one. We call it trigonal pyramidal. That's kind of the shape they're getting here. And um, you can see what this kind of looks like here. There we go, a little spinning picture here. Um, trigonal pyramidal, three bonded, one non bonded. We call it angle a little less than 109 because these unbonded electrons actually repel a little better than the other ones do. We're not too concerned with that other than maybe being aware that that happens. So a little less than 109 asymmetrical. Are these polar? Well, we have a highly electronegative atom and it's asymmetrical, so yes, it's polar. This one here, we have highly electronegative atoms on the outside and it's asymmetrical, so yes, it's polar. Um, let's take a moment, let's fill out our sheet. Okay, what do we want to get here? All right, so I have, first of all, the name is trigonal pyramidal. All right, um, still a little 100, 109, and still, there's there's still four electron, doma electron domains there, so. All right, this guy, is another one, we have X bonded to two things, but it's got two on, bonded pairs. So there we go. Remember, if they have unbonded pairs, then we're not symmetrical. We're going to be lopsided. Um, let's see what we got for a shape on this guy. Um, all right, so this guy here. All right, so we have water. Mm, nice. So we have four electron domains. And you'll see how they're spaced out here a little bit. But yeah, bent. One skimmer bent. Okay. It's a little more bent than the last bent. The last bent had 120 degrees. This one's even less than 109. 104, they're saying. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill this in here. Um, about 109 degrees. I guess we're seeing it's a little lower. SP3. And it's called bent. And this is our second bent, by the way. Remember, why is it more bent than the last one? Well, it's got four electron domains as opposed to only three. So there's less room. It's more bent. Um, looks like we got an extra one here. Okay, we'll fix that on yours. And let's move to five things. Now, I wouldn't want to mention one thing here is that from this point forwards, this is probably 
90% of our content. Okay, just so you're aware. If you're gonna try and remember everything, well that's fine. But this is 90% of what we're ever gonna deal with. Okay. All right, so next up, five things up the center. We're gonna start moving a little faster. Okay, five things up the center. Okay, so here we go. Move it along, five things up the center. Trigonal bipyramidal. So we have this situation here. I think we can get this thing spinning here. Uh, if we do this, there we go. So there's five things off the center. We call this equator here um, the this equator and the axis. So we get a situation where we have a 90s and 120s. So my shape's getting a little bit more funky, but yeah, it's fine. So let's go back to our picture here. Let's fill me know. Okay. All right. So we got something in the center. We got one, two, three. On the equator, those are flat, and one up, one down. That's five things. Zero non-bonded. The angles are are 90 and 120. The angle's getting less worried about here. S, P, 3, D, as we call this. These are the orbitals. We know these. Is symmetrical? Well, is there any, are there any unbonded pairs? No. So, yes, it's symmetrical. We call this trigonal bipyramidal. All right, now we're starting to lose things. One unbonded, okay. This uh, again, it's 90 and 120 if you want to call that. Still the same, S, P, 3, D. Symmetrical, no. Let's see what this looks like. All right, is this a polar molecule? No, uh, because it's symmetrical. It's got a dipole moment of zero. All right, let's go to the next guy here. Okay, now we lost one of them. We call this seesaw. Okay, let's see if we can get a shape moving for us here. And there, no we don't. Okay, any questions on that? Look at that. We have one, two, three, four, five electron domains. But one of them is missing, so we're going to uh, be able to do that. This is called Seesaw. All right, five things and three of them. Let's go to the next one here. All right. Getting closer to the end here. All right, so there we go. Um, we call this one T-shaped, and you can kind of see why they call it T-shaped. And of course, we have unbound pairs, so we're asymmetrical. Okay, there we go. So two unbonded pairs, still the same 90, 100, we could say, or whatever you want to call it. Um, SP, 3D, no, and we call it seesaw. Uh, we call it T-shaped. And there's lots more names here, but we're really looking at just a situation where these questions are a little bit less common. All right, next one. All right, so we have three things out there. Notice we're always losing from the equator. That was something I always kind of I could never keep straight when I was in college and stuff. So either way, um, yeah, call it linear. So once again, we're at linear because it's straight. All right, so let's go back to this guy. Now again, that means we have a uh, center atom, unbonded pair, unbonded pair, unbonded pair, one bonded, one bonded, that's linear. So in this case, three unbonded, and if you want to call it 180, you can, okay? Um, still have the five domains, we call it SP3D. Now here's one more of the exception to our little unbonded pair rule here. And came back to being symmetrical. Again, last common. We call it linear. Okay, just wouldn't worry about memorizing every little thing. Okay, six things off the center. Let's see what it looks like. All right, so it looks like this. Two names, this guy, either octahedral, which is a eight-sided object, or square by per middle. Okay, and every single electron domain is full, so it's symmetrical. Are these polar? No, because it is symmetrical. Dipole moment of zero. 
All right, so let's jump back to our page and fill that out. Um, zero non-bonded. There's everything there is 90. Everything's 90. All right. So um, S P three D two. Are we symmetrical? Yes. Um, I'll call it octahedral. Octahedral. So you filled that thing in. It would have eight sides on it. Okay, one non-bonded. Still 90s, everything 90. Still SP3D. All of these will be SP3D2. But no, it's not symmetrical. And let's go see what that looks like. Okay, flip it to the next one. So now we have one missing. So they call it square pyramidal. Square pyramidal. All right, bond angle is still kind of the same. Perfect. And we call it square pyramidal. The last one, two unbonded pairs, 90 degrees, sp2. Is it symmetrical? Here's our other exception to the rule here for this unbonded pair deal. And this one, it flattens out on us, okay, into a plane. And it becomes a, it could become symmetrical again. So is this guy polar? No, it's got a dipole moment of zero. All right, so let's go ahead and do this last one, and then we're all done here. Is it is it symmetrical? Yes. We call it square planar. Okay, and let's stop there for the moment. Thank you very much.